What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna revisit the topic of burnout. Yes, I know, I seem to love talking about it so much, but it's only because it's very much still an issue. As long as it's still an issue, I'm gonna keep talking about it. But the thing that bumped it onto my radar again this time was uh, the latest issue of the Monitor on Psychology. This is the April, May 2024 issue and they talk about it a little bit. I've linked to this article below as well. If you wanna follow along, you can access it online for free. The title of this article is, at what stage in their careers are psychologists most at risk of burnout? The first thing that I looked at when I read the article was the graph showing the data. And the thing that stood out to me the most was actually that Burnout seems pretty high across the board for everybody. The real takeaway is that all psychologists are real prone to burnout. Like these numbers are alarming. Here's a quote from the article. Quote, early career psychologists were consistently more likely to report they felt burned out than psychologists in later career stages. Although rates of burnout are slowly falling, each year of the survey, more than one third of the psychologists still reported feeling burned out. And they also say, quote, Early and mid-career psychologists consistently reported higher levels of stress than senior and late senior careers psychologists, according to the annual APA practitioner surveys conducted in 2021 through 2023. And I'll read the footnote that describes the phases of career as they define them. Early career is defined as psychologists with 10 or fewer years of professional experience since earning their doctorate. Mid-career is defined as psychologists with 11 to 20 years of professional experience since earning their doctorate. Late career is defined as psychologist with 21 to 30 years of professional experience since earning their doctorate and late senior career is defined as psychologist with 31 or more years of professional experience since earning their doctorate. I mean, this really stands out to me because even as someone who has barely had their doctorate degree for 12 years at this point, I feel like my experience in the first like two, three years right after earning my doctorate was way more stressful than it was five years out, seven years out. I'd be very curious to see that broken down even more. Like can early career be broken down into its subdivisions of like the first couple years out versus five years out versus nine years out. Also, I'd be really curious to hear more about how those stress levels compare to, let's say, while you're still in graduate school. All of that prefacing in place, here's the data where they looked at psychologists' average self-reported stress levels by career stage and year from 2021 through 2023. And psychologists reported their stress level on a scale of one to 10, and the overall reported stress levels across all stages of career for 2021 were six on average for all psychologists who reported back. 2022, it was 4.9 overall, and in 2023, it was 5.9 overall. But then if you look at the breakdown, early career versus later career, the early career folks, their average reported stress level in 2021 was 6.5, and then the same number again in 2023. And the late senior career folks reported that their average stress level in 2021 was 5.4, and in 2023, it was 5.3. And also mid-career reports were matching the early career reports of stress levels. That's also real interesting. Like you have to apparently be working for at least 20 years for the stress levels to start declining. Now there was a much greater discrepancy across the career span for psychologists who responded that they either agree or strongly agree with the statement, quote, I feel burned out. The highest level of agree or strongly agree with quote, I feel burned out happened for the therapists in their early career. That's their first 10 years since having their doctorate with 64.5% agreeing with those statements in 2021. And that number in 2023 was 57.3% compared to those in their late senior career where in 2021, only 29.6% either agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. And in 2023, 22.2% said, I agree or I strongly agree with the statement, I feel burned out. So that is obviously a massive discrepancy. I mean, that's more than double of psychologists in their first 10 years of their career saying they feel burned out compared to psychologists who've been doing this for 30 years or more. All that said, that's all this article gives us. Naturally, <laughs> 
This took me on a rabbit trail because I wanted to know the answer. What data do we have about therapists burning out in the profession? I'm gonna take you on that journey with me now. Let's see what else is out there. According to the APA dictionary, burnout is defined as, quote, physical, emotional, or mental exhaustion accompanied by decreased motivation, lowered performance, and negative attitudes towards oneself and others. It goes on to say, it results from performing at a high level until stress and tension, especially from extreme and prolonged physical or mental exertion, or an overburdening workload take their toll. Absolutely terrifying. I found this meta-analysis article published in Frontiers in Psychology in August 2022 that had quite a bit of information. So let's dig into it. The title of this article is Burnout and Psychological Wellbeing Among Psychotherapists, a Systematic Review. And this systematic review reconfirmed the claim from the Monitor and Psychology article that kicked off this whole video saying, quote, Younger psychotherapists tend to report increased levels of burnout symptoms in comparison to older and more experienced colleagues in that profession. And I'm not really sure how they do this practically when they're conducting the research, but they go on to offer an explanation for why this is. They say, quote, in our specific context, this is explained by the fact that young psychotherapists often have excessively high and unrealistic expectations about their role in this job, and the subsequent reality crash may be a significant burnout catalyst for them. When I saw this part of the article, I really appreciated it. I actually hadn't heard anybody present this perspective before, but it makes sense to me when I hear it. Like, yeah, that fit for me. <laughs> if it really is true that folks earlier in their career are more prone to burnout, and that is a direct result of us having way too high expectations of ourselves as therapists, that feels like something that we can do something about when there are so many things that feel like they're outside of our control. Can we interact with each other in a way that brings all of us back to planet Earth as far as what's realistic to expect of ourselves given where we're at in our career today and trust that we're still learning and we can keep growing and accessing more information and there will never be a day when we know all the things. We can't know all the things because we're humans. Some other important things that they uncovered in this systematic review are, quote, traits related to negative emotionality, such as neuroticism and emotional reactivity, were burnout predictors, while those associated with emotional stability and high levels of subjectively perceived resources, such as resilience, were buffers against this syndrome in this occupation. And the quote goes on to say, similarly, emotion-oriented coping was positively correlated with burnout. I know that's tricky. Positively correlated means there's increased burnout. While problem-focused coping or the use of humor to deal with work-related stress were negatively linked to burnout symptoms in this occupation. Now there are parts of that quote that kind of common sense wise makes sense to me. Like if you believe you have more coping resources, you are less prone to burnout, for example. But I'm really curious. They talk about emotion-oriented coping as correlated with burnout. And I'm really curious what emotion-oriented coping is. Let me Google it. Okay, here's a little quote from the National Institutes of Health. It says, quote, emotion-oriented coping is defined as individuals' efforts at reducing stress through emotional responses, including emotion expression, blaming others, self-blame, emotion containment, and passive resignation. Okay, that clarifies it. So it sounds like there's a takeaway we might be able to extrapolate here or at least seems like it couldn't do more harm. And that's if you're finding any signs of burnout popping up for you rather than minimizing it or over inflating it with overly emotional responses. It might be really helpful to name reality for what it is, see if there's anything you can do to help problem solve and access as many resources as you have on the topic. And here are a couple of other takeaways that came from the systematic review that we've been looking at. Quote, six studies have revealed significant associations between high workload and increased levels of burnout. I think we have Captain Obvious to thank for that one, but it is still helpful to see that it is supported in the data. And I know that people are gonna leave some comments about this next one, even though I'm just reading a quote, because some people are gonna see it as combative and I'm, I'm just, I'm sharing some data. Quote, additionally, working in the public sector seemed to be positively associated with burnout levels. Again, positively associated, 
means there's increased levels of burnout associated with being in the public sector. It continues on about this saying, quote, this finding was usually explained by a lack of control over their own work environment among psychotherapists and an increased level of bureaucracy in such workplaces compared to private psychotherapist offices, where they may feel that they have more control over when, where, and how they will be working with their clients. And thank goodness, a moment of hope, quote, lastly, personal therapy and or supervision act as a buffer against burnout, as mentioned by five authors. Well, I know this video is just me sharing some of the information that's available out there and offering some of my own kind of opinions and perspectives interlaced. Like I know that I personally don't have the direct solution for like, here's how to solve all burnout, but I can talk about it. And so I hope it's helpful to at the very least if you're feeling stressed or burned out in your workplace, that you feel seen and validated, what you're going through, unfortunately, is normal. The way that we've set up our career is setting folks up for burnout and stress. But I do think this is a good opportunity for each of us to check in and see what are our expectations of ourselves within this career, particularly for folks who are earlier on in their career process and see if there's appropriate spaces for you to kind of reality check your expectations of yourself. You know, whether it's a supervisor, a consult group, your personal therapist, not to degrade all the skills that you bring forth because you do already have so many, but to bring yourself back to a healthy, appropriate reality and say, I'm right where I'm supposed to be right now. If I need help with something, I can ask for help. That doesn't mean I'm falling short somehow. That feels like a very helpful narrative shift that we all can work on together. And I also appreciated the takeaway of making sure we're not having overly emotionally oriented responses when we're seeing signs of burnout, whether we're seeing it in ourselves and looking at how we respond, but also for those of us who are in the support networks of someone that we might be witnessing burning out, especially if we're seeing somebody go the like kind of cynical, emotionally reactive route when maybe there's some problem solving that could help the situation. If you have any advice that you found really helpful when you were maybe inching towards burnout or potentially already burned out, feel free to leave it in the comments below as other people might be going through that right now and they might find that really helpful to see what you found helpful. And before we close, I'd like to thank therapynotes.com for sponsoring this video. Therapy Notes helps with all of your practice management needs from scheduling to notes to billing. They have a HIPAA secure telehealth platform and so much more. If you'd like to check out Therapy Notes, you can get two months to try it for free with no commitment just by clicking the link in the description of this video. Well, wherever you are in your career, in your life journey, I hope you found this helpful and supportive. I will keep talking about burnout as long as it continues to be a issue amongst us and hopefully we can move the needle in a healthier direction. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well.